So this is not a Volkswagen GTI, and this is not my usual empty passenger seat. That's right. This is Chris from the Winding Road and the Topher channel. You've probably seen him in the past few videos on channel. We got Doc Dem3 and the Aventador in front of us. Kind of hard not to listen to that. And today I am driving Chris's. Ooh, uh, I am driving Chris's BRZ poorly. So I've been driving this car. I drove it probably about 20 minutes this morning, and uh, this is my second time in it. First time with Chris in the passenger seat. Yeah. Thank you for trusting me to drive your car alone. You know, by the way, I let everyone drive this thing. Probably not all of you two, but you know, I, <laughs> if I know you and I trust your driving skills, I'll let you drive because it's a fun car to drive. It's, I think it's, that's kind of part of the whole thing is sharing, sharing the experience. So I wanted to talk about the the FRS and the BRZ. This happens to be a BRZ. Um, and talk about basically, you know, this is hyped up to be a, a fantastic sports car, especially for the money. And the online reviews aren't, I mean, a lot of them are favorable towards it, but a lot of them are also like, it doesn't have any power, like this and that. Sure. And I guess I just kind of want to talk about it, and talk about what made you buy the car and just kind of, you know, what it feels like to drive. So right away, the first thing I noticed is that clutch pedal throw is super short. Yes. Um, and also the shifter is super short, which is really nice. The shifter's great. So I'll tell you why I bought this. Uh huh. <clears throat> I actually had a GTI. Uh huh. Believe that or not, I had a GTI, and I went from my GTI to this. And um, I wanted something rear wheel drive. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that I could drift around in the winter on snow tires that I could take to the track and kind of become a better driver, push my limits a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've taken this thing ice racing. I've taken it drifting, I've taken it to many track days, autocrosses, I daily drive it all, all year. Uh, I bought this to just drive the heck out of it and enjoy. Um, what is it the best at, out of all those things? I would say, I mean, it's it's just, for me, it's a great daily driver. Okay. I love it, because it makes each journey just a little bit more enjoyable. You know, you can kind of kick the tail out every now and then. I, have, I also have like four sets of wheels and tires for this okay. thing that all like do different things. And uh, that's kind of, I just enjoy it. And it fits my lifestyle. This could be my only car. A uh -huh. uh, couple, two, three times a week, I go mountain biking. I throw my mountain bike in the back seat. Wow. I just fold the seats down. I've got all the room that I need. If I need to haul two or three people, I can. You know, it's fine. It's, um, so of course, since I bought this, I bought two other cars, too, that I just kind of had to buy because they yeah. came up and friends were selling them. But, um, yeah, I mean, I love this thing. It's, it's great. It's... I don't really, uh, I drive a lot of cars, and a lot of cars have just a ton of power, but they're not necessarily fun to drive, or, mm -hmm. or engaging, or visceral, or, you know, uh, they don't put a smile on your face, Yeah. even though they're really fast, and they're loud, and they sound great, uh, Dr. M3's Aventador is kind of like a real yeah, great exception yeah. to that rule, though, but, uh, this car is, you know, you can approach the limits on the road, and you can, you can really enjoy, uh, the engine, you can ring it out, you can floor it in a few gears and you're not going 120 miles an hour. Yeah, so you're doing the speed limit. You know? When I was driving it earlier, um, we were on a nice section of road and I was in third gear and I was flat for so long that yeah. if I, you know, if I was in the Aventador, like that, that would have been jail time. No yeah, yeah, you could doing like 160 and probably. We probably did 40 to like 75-ish yeah. and it was fun. I had a big smile on my face the whole time. We're on a bumpy back road right now. That, that I've never driven before. I feel comfortable in the car. It's settled even though it's bumpy. There's nothing sketchy about it. I don't feel like the rear, rear end is just gonna pop out. You can it's get just, into this car and just drive it and enjoy it. And the, uh, uh, it's very approachable. My, I think my favorite thing is the gas and brake placement. It's very similar to where the GTI is. Yeah. Um, so it's very easy for me to heel toe. Um, the steering is super direct. I mean, it's, it's you know, little bits like that get you going side to side in the lane. Bro, We're awesome turning around turns. here and everybody's making like seven point turns. Ready? Let's check the BRZ turning radius. Oh, don't hit the M3 though. If we had lighter right. tires, There's we could just one. a donut. But. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're backing up. We're gonna make this. The event door was like a seven point turn. We got this. Yeah, we're good. Need a new end lane. Oh, oh, there we go. Boom, three point turn on a very narrow road. M3 and Aventador did like a six point turn. 
that's right. Seven points. It's, it's, it's got to be an odd number, otherwise you're going backwards. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but yeah, I think overall I can understand why people like this car so much. Yeah, I, I'm curious to hear your first impressions on it, having never driven one before, and you spent a decent amount of time in it driving some good roads. Sure. You know, what do you think? Um, it, I do agree with you that it is a little bit down on power. Yeah. Um, and maybe a tune and headers could solve that, and maybe it needs some forced induction. Who knows? Yeah. Um, well, eventually this is getting a V8. This is actually okay. getting yep. swapped. Yeah. But that's that's you know a few years down the road. So we're going over a sketchy bridge. Yeah, so I really enjoy the steering feel. Obviously, you have some... Chris has some uh, all-season tires on it with a fairly large sidewall. And that, you can kind of feel in the turn-in. It's a little bit, like, like jiggly almost. I don't know how to describe it. It's a little it. bit rubbery. It's, it's a little bit... Exactly, yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. It's rubbery. Um, but then it's, you know, it settles in. It's very planted. The nice thing about not having a crazy amount of power is that, you know, traction control only kicked in once on my back road romp, pretty much. Um, I didn't feel like I was just going to blow the tires off and spin the car in narrow turns. You could really push. You could really push, exactly. I think exactly. there's something very satisfying to just burying your foot into the floor. Yep. And uh, that's, uh, I, also, I have Miata too, and I, yep. I love that I can just go flat out in that thing all the time. And, you know, you're just like keeping up with traffic. This is a little bit faster than the Miata. But um, I kind of, I've always been a slow car fast mentality. Yeah. Um, one thing where this car falls down though is that the power delivery isn't linear. So no. you mentioned that you know you, you'll do half throttle. And it's pretty much full. And you kind of get all the power you're gonna get. You, you put it to full throttle, not much else happens. Yeah. Under four or five thousand RPM, that's the case, unfortunately. That's the way it is. Above it, you know, you have a little more a little bit more to offer, yeah. Power. But in these cars, there's that infamous torque dip that just kind of it's right in the sweet spot where you want it. And headers and a tune solve that. Yeah. Let's get a, a little acceleration in here. Let's yeah. see if I can do it smoothly. Maybe not. All right, going for second gear. Take We're it in there. it. Oh, I do feel the torque dip. I didn't notice that before. I forgot about that. It really does kind of dip right around 4,000, and then it comes back. There's nobody home under 4,000. That's so weird. Yeah. Which again makes it more fun on the back roads, and that's what I was enjoying because I'm coming into a turn, and instead of, you know, like I would in the GTI, maybe staying in third gear and riding the torque out from three grand up, uh, I'm I'm de I'm heel towing in the second, yeah. and that's just you know just another shift that maybe doesn't need to be made, but it's fun. So let me know what you guys think. Have you driven a BRZ? What do you think of it? How does it compare to the GTI? Let me know in the comments below. Huge thanks to Chris for one, letting me drive his car, and two, being on camera with me. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to go catch, check out, catch out. Make sure to go catch Chris's channel outside. Catch me outside. <laughs> Make sure to go that? check out Chris's channel. Thank you guys for watching. Go out there and spread some positivity, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Boom. Now we can put the windows down. Yeah, yeah. A little toasty. A little toasty in here.